Welcome, as today I am talking about a soap opera, and I will be talking about many soap operas going forward. Because uh, sometimes I just like to get away from this redundance of reality television, especially all three of the main shows I've been covering, Survivor, Big Brother, The Challenge. They've all been pretty fucking boring for the most part. So, you know, I would like to talk about other things, and I can, because this is my channel, and I can do whatever the fuck I want. But also, I, I, I was doing pro wrestling at times, but, like, that shit's unwatchable. So I wanted to talk about soap operas, ranking the current soap operas for the month of October. I'm ranking soap operas from the U.S., Australia, uh, England, and even New Zealand. I might rank more soap operas from other countries in the future. I have watched telenovelas. I just haven't had time to add telenovelas to this large roster of soap operas because we are starting with Last Place, which is number 11. And it is The Young and the Restless. Yes, the highest rated soap opera in the U.S. still to this day is by far the worst soap opera to watch right now, in my opinion. Let's really try to break this down. I was trying to decide, like, what is the worst offense? Is it like really bad stories, really just stories that might even piss you off on these shows? Is that the worst offense? Because, you know, a lot of soap operas, especially in the U.S., have done a lot of that over the past two decades, just bad storytelling to piss off the fan base. So is that worse or is being boring worse? Just being downright fucking boring. And after watching these 11 soap operas I'll be talking about over this next week, I came to the conclusion that being boring is by far the worst offense you can do on any kind of television. Even this week talking about Survivor being boring. The last episode of Survivor was fucking boring. So, Young and the Restless is just the most boring of these 11 soap operas. And frankly, I don't, it's not even close. Like number 10, that which we'll get to, is also boring at times. So that is why those two soap operas are the bottom two soap operas in the rankings for the month of October. Because I, who wants to watch something so boring all the goddamn time? It's on a day-to-day -day basis, Young and the Restless was the hardest to get through of all these 11 shows. And I don't even know if I can explain it properly. I wish I could, but I can't. I just feel like Joss Griffith, the head writer, is just giving uninspired stories that's being passable, by the network because they're just non-offensive stories that are just to get the show by on a daily basis because nobody wants to put any effort into this show because it is still the most watched soap opera in the U.S. So there's just a lack of anybody giving a shit is really what it comes down to on The Young and the Restless anymore. And it's sad because at one point it didn't get much better than The Young and the Restless as a soap opera. And that's why it built the audience that it still has to this day, and it could put out boringness all the time and still draw a big enough audience to outrate the other three surviving soap operas in America. Basically, the main story I've seen over October, and, 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 and here's a background on my watching of The Young of the Rest, is my background on watching all American soap operas over the last three years has been pretty much non-existent because it's been mostly bad. So... I have not watched a lot of the American soap operas over the past few years because why even do that? So I was catching up on The Young and the Restless just in October. <laughs> I have not watched much. I watched some episodes early in the year, I believe. 
just to see what was going on, there was a much type story for the character of Amanda, which has turned into just another non-story on this goddamn soap opera. But the main story has been Victoria and Lachlan and their wedding and Lachlan's past. We've had so many redundant episodes where Lachlan's just talking about his past every goddamn episode. And it's, it's not interesting because this is another problem on this show, much like Lachlan's past, which whatever, I guess it's character development, it's history for the character. But this show in general is telling a lot of their stories off screen. So we're just supposed to like care about these stories, even though a lot of it's happening off, off screen. When, when a lot of the characters are telling rather than showing, you got a problem on your hands. That's a big problem for a lot of television. It's a huge problem on The Young and the Restless currently. It's a problem that happens on soap operas a lot over the years, I guess, but it's definitely a big issue on The Young and the Restless for me right now. And so Victoria and Lachlan's relationship, I just don't care. Much like a lot of these stories on the show, I just don't care. They did not do a very good job in the month of October to draw me in as a lapsed viewer, like I am for Young and the Restless. Like I said, I've only watched it here and there over the past three years or more. Really over the past six years, if I'm being honest, have I really watched a whole lot of the Young and the Restless. So I'm coming into this not seeing a whole lot of the last five or six years. And they did not do a very good job of just, you know, making me care about anything they're doing because A, there's no stakes in any of the stories. It doesn't feel like anything really matters. It's just redundant, boring soap opera. That's what we're getting from The Young and the Restless. A positive to The Young and the Restless, they do still have a lot of core old characters, which could be a double-edged sword because uh, you, you watch it and you recognize the obvious players, Victor Newman, Jack Abbott, Nikki, Nick, Sharon, you know, all the mainstays are still there. And I take that back. I did watch when they killed off the character of Neil, of course, because because Christoph St. John died in real life. And I don't think they've really done a very good job of making up for losing one of their main Black characters over the years. They have some Black characters on cast but like i said for amanda i saw on, on social media it was being hyped up as a big story for amanda coming in getting a family and i think i i tuned into some of that when that was allegedly happening that's when i tuned in earlier in the year and i just feel like we did not get a whole lot of that story at that time and i ain't seeing a lot of a, a whole lot of amanda in the month of october either so clearly that story went a whole lot of fucking nowhere but it's not just the black characters going nowhere. It's basically everybody on this show is boring. And their stories are boring. Like, they brought in this Jesse Gaines character to tie into Lachlan's history. And I didn't really give a shit. Like, I'm watching Jesse Gaines becomes a, a big part of the story for the first half of this month. And I'm like, why... Why do I care about Jesse Gaines? Why should I care about Jesse Gaines? But then I'm just like, oh, wait a minute. I don't give a fuck about Jesse Gaines. <laughs> Why would I? Who the fuck cares about Jesse? Uh, I mean, I don't really have a whole lot to say about this show other than the fact that it's so boring right now. I don't feel like these stories are really going anywhere I, the show is just a bunch of couples that are mostly happy because they don't have a whole lot of stakes in their drama. But that doesn't make for a good soap opera. It makes for a very boring shell of a show. And it's unfortunate that they're probably going to keep getting away with this because it still has the fan base. It's still the number one watch soap opera in America. It's up year to date last year. That's because I think COVID fucked up a lot of the ratings even 
worse for soap operas than they already were. So, I mean, the fact that the ratings are actually up compared to last year is probably a sign from CBS that something's working. So they're just going to keep doing the bare minimum for the young and the restless, probably for the foreseeable future. So we'll see if this show can get out of number 11 if I continue to do this ranking every month. But for now, the most watched U.S. soap opera is at the very bottom of my rankings of the current soap operas to watch. Don't recommend checking it out unless you have insomnia. Young and the Restless is the show for you. I'm gonna start watching it at night so I can sleep better. <laughs>